Okay, folks, uh, we're going to keep going with these exponents lessons here. It says uh, exponential relations, 7.4. Um, get out your graphing calculator and graph the following equations. Okay, well, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take my graphing calculator. And remember, you can uh, reset it. Second function plus sign 712. Look at that. We get a nice clean calculator here. Push y equals and go to this is something we've never put in our calculator before in this course. 2 to the exponent x. Let's graph it. Look at that. There it is right there. See how it goes? Do you remember from the last lesson? Is this growth or is this decay? Well, as you're saying, it is growth, no doubt about it. Um, in fact, I'm going to change the window settings a little bit. I'm just going to change y minimum to, I don't know, we don't have to go more than 2 down. y maximum 10, sure. Let's just check it out and see if that looks any better. Ah, not much. Anyway, there's our exponential growth. And I'm going to write in the other graph too. In y2, I'm going to put 1 half, put it in brackets just to make sure it works, 1 half exponent x. Just to make sure it works, I'm going to put it in brackets, okay? And it should be exponential decay. Okay, so it says on your sheet here, it says, what are the similarities and differences that you can see? Well, similarities, they are both exponential graphs. One of them is growth, the other is decay and similarities, well, they both seem to be crossing right at this spot right here. Okay, if we push trace, I'm not sure if we can get there. Oh, sure enough, I just pushed trace and it went right to that spot. It's a fluke. Okay, when x is 0, y is 1. And that not only applies to this equation, 2 to the exponent x, as you can see right here, it also applies to the 1 half to the exponent x as well. Okay, both of them cut through right at 0 and 1, 0, 1, as you can see. Okay, the differences are is that one is going up and one is going down. One is growing and one is decaying. Okay, we're going to use uh, the graphing calculator to help us solve some problems here, okay? So I'm going to read it together with you. It says, Ontario's population is projected to grow exponentially. Remember, the world population is also growing exponentially, but we're just talking Ontario right now. So it's projected to grow exponentially based on the relationship. Here it is. They've given us this. Okay? P happens to be the estimated population right there, and N is the number of years after 1996. So if we put a 0 there, that means 1996. If we put a 1 here, that means 1997, and so on. Okay? The formula is expected to be valid until 2031. I don't know if this is a true story or not, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this on my graphing calculator with good window settings. Good is in quotation marks. Okay, here's the graphing calculator. I am going to reset it. Second function, plus sign 7, 1, 2. And go to y equals and type in the equation you see right here. So it's 11 with six zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's 11 million. Wow. I come from out west, so 11 million would be a huge number if that was like Alberta. Okay? Inside, I'm going to type the number 1.0112 bracket, then an exponent sign, and then an x. Okay? If I graph it the way it is right now, we're not going to see anything. We need to make some good window settings. So by good Hmm, the calculator's still thinking. It could not graph that. Bad window settings, okay? So let's go over to the window button here. And let's think. Okay, so time starts at zero for us. So x minimum is time. x is the beginning. x minimum is the beginning of the time that we want to talk about. So let's make that zero. x maximum. Well, how many years do we want to go here? Uh, let's go tw 31. Hmm. I'm going to have to check here. 1996 and 31. I don't know, so 31 plus, let's say, 4. 
31 plus 4 <laughs> is uh, 35. So let's just make it 40, just to see a little bit further. So we're going to look for 40 years, okay, at this growth. The x, sorry, the y minimum is going to be 0, because we're talking about zero population. I mean, it's going to be a small number. And then we're going to have a maximum population. It's going to be a huge number. I'm expecting this 11 million to grow a lot. So let's just put a huge number, like 100 million. So 100 and then six zeros added on to the 100. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can hear whispering because this microphone picks it up very well. OK, let's hit graph. Wow. So there's the population growth. Interesting. That's 31 years of population growth. I'm going to make, sorry, that's 40 years of population growth. Just for fun, I'm going to put way more years of population growth. I'm going to show like, let's say 100 years. Let's see if that's enough. There's that graph. You can see it growing a little bit better now. Now it's exponential growth, so that thing should really start growing quickly. It should start growing like and then really get going. Okay. Um, I might as well show it just for fun. I'm going to put, I don't know, 200 years. 200 years. Let's see this population really start growing here. It's a nice graph. Okay, and it's starting to grow much quicker there. Interesting. So the question in the background here says, what was Ontario's population in 1996? Show this on the graph. Well, that's pretty easy. 1996 is the beginning, so push trace, and 1996 is when x is equal to 0, the very beginning. And there it is. It shows us 11 million. Okay, What's the population in 1996? 11 million. Show us on the graph. Well, there it is. I'm pointing to it. Okay, If you'd wanted to, you could have drawn a quick graph and just said, where's 11 million? Right here. Here is 11 million, right at the beginning. Okay, what is the projected population for Ontario in 2031? Well, be very careful. This is something to think about here. On your graphing calculator, 2031. We're not going to type in 2031 here, because that's not how we set it up. 2031 is actually, let's see, you start at 1996 right here. So you go four years and you get to the year 2000, and then 31 more years. So 31 plus 4 is 35. So that's 35 years after 1996. A bit confusing there. This is the population right here. 16243882. If you want me to tell you it, it's 162,043,882, but for our information here, that's that's what the number that they're looking for. Okay, that is the population in 2031. Apparently, that's actually a lot of people. 16 million. That is a lot. Even though this graph doesn't look like it's growing quickly, think about it. 16 million right now, or in sorry, in 1996 there was 11 million. 16 million. Wow. Okay. So that is the projected population in 2031. We're basically done this question, but I want to show you one more way of doing this. Let's say you didn't have a graphing calculator, you just had a regular one. All you do is use this formula that's right beside us here. And instead of n, we're going to type in exponent uh we're going to type in exponent 35 cuz n is the number of years after 1996. So watch, 11 1 2 3 4 5 6 bracket 1 point zero one one two bracket then an exponent and remember instead of n we're gonna put the number thirty five see it's the same answer we got when we did it on the graph right here okay it's that one six sorry thirty five one six two four three eight eight two one six two four three eight eight one point seven. Well, they just rounded it off to a two, so you get the same answer when you just use the equation that they gave. Okay, so you don't need a graphing calculator to get the answer, but we just did. Okay, one more question: a car. This is a car. Hopefully that grabs your attention. For those of you that want to be driving, 
car that's worth $30,000 loses 25% of its value each year after it is purchased. Very real life. The value of the vehicle V can be modeled by the relation. So here is the equation, okay? Where T is the time in years. It says graph this on your graphing calculator with good window settings. Well, let's do it. I'm going to move the calculator over so we can see it. And here we go. Second function plus sign 712. And then push Y equals. Type in the 30,000. 30, thousand dollars. That's an expensive car in my opinion. I don't think I'll ever spend that much on a car. As much as I like vehicles, it's just too much money. Okay, instead of exponent t, we're going to put exponent x. And let's graph this with good window settings. By good window settings, that means we're talk. Ouch! That was my hand hitting my microphone. Okay. By good window settings, we're going to talk about time. So time is going to start at zero, just like it always has. And I don't know, how many years should we talk about here? Let's talk like 20 years for this car. A lot of cars don't even last past 20 years, but let's just do 20. And for the the Y minimum, well that's talking about the price of the car, the value of the car. So Y minimum, let's make it zero. And let's make Y maximum, well that's the maximum price of the car. And unfortunately with a car, most cars, when you buy it, that is the maximum price. And as soon as you pull out of the parking lot, you're looking at a huge loss. It's not worth as much. Even the minute you pull out of the parking lot, you won't be able to sell it for what you just paid the dealership for. Sad, but true. Okay, let's check out the graph. There it goes. Look at that. Exponential decay. It's the opposite of the population that we just did before this. Let's look at that graph. It's going down, and that's the value of your car decreasing. Very sad. Okay, so we just did that. We graphed it with good window settings. What is the car's worth after one year? Well, after one year, all you do is push trace, and if we push zero, that's what it was when you bought it originally, $30,000. After one year, the car is worth 22500 Wow! Okay, so you'd write 22500 right there. After two years, well, just type in 2, enter, 16875 after two years. Wow, it's almost half as much after only two years. It's probably still in great condition, too. After three years, there we go, $12,656.25. Boy, oh boy, this car is decreasing quickly. How about 10 years? After 10 years, that car is only worth $1,689.41 if you're being picky. Okay, that is not a lot of money after 10 years. Okay, I don't know how realistic this is, but those are the answers you can get. If you did not have a graphing calculator, all you would do is stick this number one where you see the T right there. So on your calculator, you just go 30,000, bracket 0 0.75, exponent 1. You're going to get the answer that the calculator just gave. Put the 2 where the T is, and that'll tell you for 2 years, 3 years, and 10 years. Just put the number right there. How many years? Okay, put it where the T is. I'm not going to do it because I kind of showed it in the last example how to go about doing that. How many, so now question C, how many years will it be before the car is $4,000 or worth $4,000? Well, one way of doing this is just kind of using your arrows here and just looking for $4,000 to show up on the Y value. Let's keep looking. $4,000. Let's get really close. $4,200. $3,980. Hmm. This here is a little closer than this number to $4,000. So I'm just going to stop right there. I would say the car is worth, or not worth, I would say that it would take about seven years. Now let's look if we click one up. 6.8 and seven, I would say it would take about seven years, okay? About seven, I'm writing with my mouse, not my pen, so it's very messy looking. Whoa, it would take about seven years for the car to be worth about $4,000.